Welcome to this fifth Sunday after Pentecost. You have the order service in front of you, and our theme for today is the authority of Christ's messenger is based on their living contact with God. So here we are, the messengers of God, worshiping to the Lord today, this morning. So we ask the Lord would guide you, bless you as you say these prayers and read the word of God. Just remind you that we don't have put the year B book over there with you. See that we have put the Bibles before you. So where the Bible readings are there, so you can take out. And the prayer is at the back, the special prayer at the back of the order service. We all, when time comes, we will all stand and read that. And also our responsive reading is from Red Hymnal. So the number which is given Red Hymnal, we'll follow that. So, so we pray that the Lord will bless you as you adore and praise God. Would you please turn with me to the Lord's Supper book, page 105, page 105. Section 3, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us rise up and adore and praise God by singing hymn number 79, Fairest Lord Jesus. Mighty God, to whom all hearts open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, lend the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Almighty God, Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. 
Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Would you please turn the yellow sheet, order service. Would you turn over and where the collect is written, we shall say the prayer together. O God, you desire all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Grant that as the first apostles were sent out by your son, so in his name the church may continue to heal the sick, support the oppressed and announce the good news of your beloved. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. Please turn in your red hymnal book. Page 575, we shall do responsive reading of Psalm 65. Praise is due to thee, O God, in Zion. And to thee shall walk. O thou who hearest prayer, to thee shall all flesh come and account of sins. When our transgressions prevail over us, thou dost forgive them. Blessed is he who thou dost choose and bring near to dwell in thy courts. He shall be satisfied in the goodness of the holy temple. By dread deeds thou dost answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. Who art the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the earth. Who by the strength established the mountains. Be with might. Thou dost still the roaring of the sea. The roaring of the waves, the human of the people. So that those who dwell in the earth furthest bounds are afraid of thy sight. Thou visited the earth and waterest it, thou greatly enrichest it. Thou provided their grain for so thou it. Thou waterest its furors abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with shafts and blessing its growth. Thou crownest the years with thy bounty. The hills with themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valley get themselves with grain. seated we will have the ministry of the word the first reading is taken from the first book of kings chapter 19 verses 19 to 21 the call of elisha page number 301. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plying with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him, and he left the oxen and ra ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people. And they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah 
and assisted him. This is the word of the God. Thanks be to God. The second reading has been taken from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 13 to 22. Book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 13 to 22, and it is found in the Bible on page number 912. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they were astonished, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. But when they had commanded them to leave the council, they conferred with one another, saying, what shall we do with these men? For that a notable sign has been performed through them in evident to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But in order that it may spread no further no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it, it is right in the sight of God to listen to, your, to you rather than to God. You must judge, for we cannot but speak of what we have be seen and heard. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them. Because of the people, for all were praising God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us all rise up and sing and praise God. Singing bhajan number 15, Pavan hai wo prabhu hamara. We find in this small booklet, which is there in the red hymnal.
gospel according to mark chapter 3 beginning from verse 7 let us all say together glory to you christ jesus jesus the jew with his disciples to the sea and the great crowd followed from galilee and judea and jerusalem edomia and beyond the jordan and from around the tyre and sidon when the great crowd heard all that he was doing they came to him and he told his disciple to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd lest they crush him for he had healed many so that all who had disease pressed around him to touch him and whenever the unclean spirits saw him they fell down before him cried out you are the son of god and he strictly ordered them not to make him known and he went up on the mountain and called on him those whom he desired and they came to him and he appointed 12 whom he also named apostles so that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons he appointed the 12 simon to whom he gave them the name peter james the son of zebedee john the brother of james to whom he gave the name boenegers that is the sons of thunder andrew philip Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James is the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus Simon the zealot and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him and he went home and the crowd gathered again and so they could not even eat when his family heard it that they went out to seize him for they were saying he is out of mind and the scribes who came down from jerusalem were saying he is possessed by belzebul and by the prince of demons he cast out the demons this is the gospel of christ praise to you lord jesus please be seated Welcome to this morning as we worship the Lord Lord. I pray that God will bless you today and strengthen you as you worship the Lord today. Isn't it true the Lord gave us strength when we worship our Lord. And it's very important to receive strength. And today Bible says when you worship the Lord you get authority. Now that's very difficult but that's what it is. When you worship the Lord God gives you authority. And what kind of authority for what the authority? why authority given to you well we see it from the scripture today well we have some announcements today uh, just to inform you you know uh, webhav lal his father webhav and rishpa you remember they sit right here mr webhav father has slept in the lord he was in jharkhand from there he came back and he was not well he had a pacemaker and he was chandan devi hospital at janakpuri admitted and he was on ventilator for 2 days and so this afternoon will be the the funeral so remember them the whole family webhav his, his father who slept in the lord and we pray the lord would bless the family and help them to face this hour of trial that has come upon them we're going to pray for them when we pray for the birthdays and all who are prayer in it we also have a prayer request from vijaya ghagre she is not well has asthma for last one year and she's been for month and it was reported that she has not only had asthma but also she is she is also diagnosed with tb also and she's at home and uh, anil ghagre's son has 
said, please pray for my mother for recovery and the doctors that are giving a meditation, which is becoming very difficult for her to take the medications even. So it's tough. So please do remember Mrs. Gagre, Vijaya Gagre. Remember her in your prayer. As I announced earlier that, you know, in coming week on 29th, there will be youth get-together, fellowship of Bible quiz, and also there will be also a Sunday school drawing competition is supposed to be today, but we said we'll do it on the time that we have on VBS. So we're going to have VBS on 27th, 28th, and 29th. All the children, we're going to have VBS over here. Please report all the children. Parents, please leave your children here at 8.30. Last time we saw more parents than the children. Please don't let that happen. Okay, leave your children over here. They are in a safe hand in the campus. So we will going to have a VBS time, a Bible, studying Bible, having games, Bible quiz, something, good singing, a lot of. So we pray you, they will have a wonderful time. And we are seeking permission from YMCA if they can give us their swimming pool. Rajiv is here with us. So I haven't asked him, just uh, I'll be officially meeting him also so that we can have singing over there. And uh, it's so lovely if that takes place. So it will be good. The children will enjoy a good time. And pray for the rains and have good rains and nice weather. And uh, so the children would be having a blessed time. I see Rajiv's son from Australia has come. Good, good to see you there. God bless you for some times. Lovely. We have also a reminder for you. Please see that you take these envelopes with you home. These is the, we have opened a new account <coughs> and QR code is on the notice board. You can see that. The new one is put on the, on the right side and the left is the church QR code. And uh, we opened a new account for celebration of 100 years. This is a celebration amount that we are seeking from you that you give every Sunday, every moment. You can put your check also in over here. You want to do it from QR code. We are receiving funds. Sarah is on a leave. She was supposed to come today, but she'll be coming on 25th. And uh, she was busy in the family. Her son got engaged. They got a girl from Tendu Valley from there and uh, she's gone to Bombay with the son and she'll be back here on 25th with us. So remember this, if you want to, if you want to inquire about your funds and all, you may be thinking we are not getting the receipt because Sarah is on a leave. When she comes back, she'll give you the receipt of the same to you. So do continue to contribute, do continue to do so and we just pray that God will bless in your giving our all yearly program our renovation, our new planting of the church, everything comes. So give generously. Don't hold your hand because unless you give, you won't be able to achieve this purpose for the Lord Jesus to have a centenary church and centenary congregation worshiping the Lord. You know, centenary congregation makes it big. It's very important. So reminding you, Green Park Daughter Church has come from here. And the Green Park then further established another church in Vasant Kunj, calling a free church Vasant Kunj. You know, that's the chain that grows. It's so lovely. So it's time now for 100 years we also go and have another church, congregation, hoping to have it in Dwarka before Gurgaon somewhere. And we hope some people are looking for the land and we hope to go and see the land and hope that that works out and then we're going to give you the block design of the church. We'll put it before you. It'll be put here during the time of worship so you can see it and envision it and pray with it to fulfill it that this may take place. Okay? I'm just burdening you with this. It's important. The free church family has done mighty work and will continue to do the mighty work. The people have done great work over here in the past. And the coming generation must be taught to do the work for the Lord. Also, I'd like to remind that coming Sunday, we will have the pastorate committee meeting right after the combined service. Coming Sunday is a combined service, and we'll have a pastorate committee meeting right after the service. 
Let's pray. Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this very morning as you worship, you adore your name. We pray for Vehbev's father, Lord, who has slept in the Lord. And we pray that, that Lord, you'll be with the families. Pray for the pains that his father went through, Lord, suffering for a long time, but you have given ultimate rest in your bosom. And we thank you, Lord. Pray for the family which has lost their father, Lord, and pray that you would, at this hour of trial, Lord, protect and guard them. We continue to pray for Tilak Fernande, who has coma, Lord. Pray for his revival of his brain. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. Everything is possible. You can make things happen, Lord. Pray for the children, and his wife, as they serve him, take care of him at home. Do all the medical checkup regularly. Pray for Shanti Deva. She's gone to Bangalore. Be with her mother for some time. Continue to heal her in the dialysis, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray also for Shri Chanchan, also going in dialysis, Lord. Continue to heal and touch him, Lord Jesus. We continue to pray, Lord, Vijaya Gagre, Lord. She's not well. Lord, we pray that you would be with her, Lord. Heal and touch her. Lord, we just pray that uh, all the sickness that is around her, Lord, making her weak, that you will strengthen her body as she take medication from the doctor, all the medicine. We pray your healing hand would continue to rest upon her and upon the family, with rest assured, as the Bible says, your faith has healed you. We pray for 100 years celebration also, and all that intend and plan to do so, Lord, we ask your spirit be upon us, all the churches, member, Lord, every person, Lord, every, each one, Lord. There are not would we lag behind, Lord, coming together to accomplish the purpose that you're called to do, Lord, to go and proclaim and witness that Lord Jesus is a resurrected God. Yes, Lord. We also continue to pray today for Rishpa Lal, her birthday. Pray for Mr. T and Jeremiah's birthday. Today, Lord, we also pray on 24 tomorrow, Mr. and Mrs. Philip Yadav's wedding anniversary. We pray for 25th, Mr. and Mrs. Shri Chan Chauhan, Lord, their wedding anniversary. We also pray for Sujata and Surinder wedding anniversary, Lord Jesus. Yes, you be with them. Also pray for veteran Devadas on 26th, his birthday is there, Lord. Pray for 28th, Dr. Ashish Semur's birthday, Mr. Raji Paul, Mrs. Nisha Chohan's birthday, and Ruth Reuben Harris's birthday. We pray on 30th, Arzu Samuel's birthday. We pray that you bless these birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week. And we continue to pray that your blessing would rest upon them. Bless our time in prayer as we go and intercede with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just to remind you, on 17th of July, as the, most of the mothers, ladies were sitting over there on the retreat with us the last, then we had the ladies get together over here. We're going to have it again in July. They demanded to have every two months. So we're going to have it again. So it's on the 17th of July. The time of sharing of all, all the ladies, please do come. Have a time of sharing and prayer. Last time, you, I believe you had a wonderful and a very blessed time. So, and you all shared their testimonies, shared the word together. It was so blessed to them. So we pray that all this time also on 17th will be a blessed time where both the congregation, all the ladies and mothers will join together. Please turn with me to Lord's Supper, liturgy, page number 110. We continue to pray and intercede with the Lord. In our intercession, let us join our prayer for the whole human family with the unceasing prayer of Christ the Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for justice and peace in the whole world. 
and for fullness of life for everyone. Lord, in your mercy, for all who live in this city, for the removal of all that divides us for each other, and for true harmony in our country. Lord, in your mercy, for all engaged in agriculture, industry, and commerce, for all workers skilled and unskilled, and for all who defend our country. Lord, in your mercy, for teachers, students, scientists, artists, and writers, and for all who influence the minds and hearts of others. Lord, in your mercy, for those who are suffering, the poor, the hungry, the destitute and oppressed, the unemployed, the sick and the dying, and for all who help them. Lord, in your mercy, for all to whom authority is entrusted in this and other countries, and especially for our president, the prime minister, the lieutenant governor, and the chief minister of this state, and for all who have power over other people. Lord, in your mercy, for the unity of all Christian people and for their witness and service in the world. Lord, in your mercy, for your whole church in our country, for his councils and leader, especially for Bijoy, our moderator, for Reuben, the moderator of the Church of South India, for Givurgis, Marthoma, Metropolitan of the Marthoma Church, for Paul, our bishop, and for our presbyters and for all our ministers of your church, that they may be faithful in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, that with all your people who have faithfully served you in this life, we also may share the eternal joy of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, let us say together, Haste, Heavenly Father, the coming of your kingdom, and our petitions, which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
For you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith. Firmly resolved by God's grace to keep his commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that he may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgive all who forgive one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Shall we all stand and say, share our peace with each other. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We should remain standing and praise God by singing hymn number 150, A Charge to Keep I Have. Father, as you look upon to the word that you will speak to us, not why my will, Lord, that your will take place in the listening and the hearing of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. You know, today the theme is, is so good. It talks about authority. And I don't know, everyone has authority somewhere or other in your life. As a father, you have authority. As a mother, as a daughter, as a son, 
as a grandfather, we all have authority. Somewhere or the other, we hold some authority with us. Where you take decisions, where you decide about your life, you decide about yourself, you decide about what is right and what is wrong. You have that authority. But you know, one thing we need to understand, if you have this authority, the question is who gave it to you? Who gave it to me? Authority of giving word, authority to be a public leader, or authority to be officer. You have some prescribed rules to be an authority. The question is who gave you this authority? But when you come to the government service, you say the government has given me authority. That's become very clear. If you are a teacher or somewhat teaching somewhere, the school or the university or the college has given you the authority. That becomes very clear. When it comes in terms of your life, who has given you authority in your life? Well, you say, well, that is mine. I have a right to have authority to live the way I desire. So we talk about authority in that fashion. We talk about authority for being as family. Who gave you authority as a family, to live as a family? How do you define a family today? A family is not that when you have a children. Family is not that you are prosperous. Family is not that you know, you have all the time good things around. What is the household? What is the family of people around means? Well, people say, I do it for the family. I do it for my children. You know, people say like that. But well, that's not the family. What is family then? Family is the one that is given an authority by God because families are created by God, not by us. So the family defined from the Bible is authority received from God not only to live but also to witness his name. That's what family is all about from God's point of view. From the worldly point of view, for atheists, there is no family. It's just a living relationship. The way you feel like, you can live, you can have a wonderful time, then you can go and just enjoy your life. But if you look from the God perspective, family is something authority received from God to proclaim his name in your family. And maintain that testimony in your family. That's what family is all about. Teaching each other, teaching their children, teaching their grandchildren, great-grandchildren the same legacy of having authority from God to tell what God has told them to do and live life. That's why it's different than the worldly ways of living. It's quite different then. Then the second question comes, that those who believe in authority of God, how successful they are? Well, in the Bible, they are always a failure. If you receive authority from God, always a failure. All have failed. There is not a one person who has passed except Jesus Christ. As a messenger, disciples failed. They got the word of God and they failed. They literally failed. They were chosen to be learners. Disciple means learner. To learn, they failed. Miserably failed. And uh, when you talk about, you know, later on the church, miserably failed. They failed so bad. All the church throughout has gone. Israel miserably failed. Even he showed them himself who he is. But failed. So when the message giver and we become his messengers, of God's word and they're always listening and hearing the word. What is the outcome of the result? Outcome and result of the hearing, of believing. You know, the first word can be a failures. I want you to look to the first passage. If you have a Bible, you can see it over there. And first king, this is just read to us, chapter 19. A very interesting passage. This about the life of Elijah. 
and it's 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 so strange when god showed him great deed they got afraid and went away from the lord you know sometimes it happened to us when god does great work you know what what happened to us we get afraid fear comes wow what will happen but god has done the great why do you have to fear but that comes that shows how weak and failure we are first king chapter 19 just turn with me let's let's see what it says well elijah has done a great mighty work at mount carmel you know the great work has been done and when the great work was done at mount carmel was that that the fire came from heaven and burned the sacrifice that elijah has created over there and god accepted that sacrifice because there was a big fight going on with the prophets of baal that were there if they challenge elijah if your god is true or either if my god is true let's prepare a sacrifice we call upon the lord elijah said and whoever god answers prayer and burns that fire is a true god we believe in that god well people of baal and prophet and all the people they they prayed day and night chapter 19 said they prayed and they did and all those thing if you go for verse 18 and you know it never rained and 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 and, and it's it never happened but when you know elijah prayed when elijah prayed it happens he created a sacrifice the fire came from heaven and the fire came from heaven and god accepted now now jezebel was very angry she was very angry how dare elijah kill and then jezebel after the life of elijah then what happened verse 9 in chapter 90 verse 9 we see he came to a cave and lodged in it and then lord spoke to him what are you doing here elijah you know sometimes we hide for what god does mighty work and then we ran away we run for our rescue now the enemy will come well of course enemy will come they will come and harm you then he says what are you doing here elijah he said i have been jealous for the lord the god host the people have forsaken your covenant thrown you down your altar killed your prophets with the sword and i even i only am left and they seek my life to take it away lord they just gone away they killing people in israel now they are after my life they want to kill me and he said go out and stand on the mount before the lord behold the lord passed by the great strong tore the mountains broke into pieces rock from the lord and lord was not in the wind then earthquake came he was not there the earthquake verse 12 the lord was not in the fire the fire sound low whisper then elijah heard it and wrapped his face with a cloak went down the stood at the entrance of the cave and behold came a voice so the you see elijah experienced the voice and talking with the lord in the cave the great mighty work he has done but what happened after that in verse 19 we see if we go to verse 19 then when the he has spoken and the lord has given a great work he has done through him and we just cut short a further move you know he has already killed so many prophets of baal in verse 19 he departed from there and found elisha the son of shah he was hiding himself and he went and found found elisha and when he found elisha shapat from a shapat he he was so afraid he said i want to die Elijah wanted to die. He said, "I don't want to live. I, I don't want to live. I have not kissed any prophet of the Baal, and they're after my life, and they want to kill me. No, I don't want to live." But what he did, he put a cloak around Elisha. Go back, and he left with oxen. Elijah passed by and and cast his cloak upon him. Verse twenty nineteen. He says that. Then. Elisha said to Elijah, "Let me go back to my father and mother and meet them." He said, "No, go back. What have I done to you? Go back. Do the sacrifice I told you to do." He went back and did the sacrifice of yoke and oxen with the boil, their their flesh, and gave to his people around. 
And then he came back to Elijah. Now the whole Elijah's life of Elijah is a turmoil, pain and suffering. Even after seeing the great mighty act, Moses, Jeremiah, great men of God, but pain, suffering, suffered, miserably suffered. You know, in our life, this is what happened. It, it, when, when you go and pass through the life of wilderness, you know, and times and suffering comes, you know, there's a great victory in suffering. Let's turn around to Mark Gospel chapter 3, just, just now read to us. There's another kind of suffering, another kind of joy and authority given. Luke Gospel chapter 3. If you turn over there, and a great crowd followed Jesus because the man with the withered hand was healed. And verse 6 says, the people who were around Jesus planned to kill him. That's the only word in the whole Bible that says they wanted to kill him. Six, the Pharisees went out immediately, could counsel with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. You know, when you do the God's work, what enemy gives you the message? Destroy. If you do something good, what enemy message is? Destroy. He wants to destroy. The authority that he has given to you, enemy doesn't like that. You know why he doesn't like that? Because he wants you to take authority from him rather from Jesus. So messengers of God who always hear the word of God and committed over there, the enemy will be committed over here to destroy you. Be very sure of that. If you, are, if, if you have a family or you are a family people, all of us are, see that the enemy is there to destroy you. Enemy is there to destroy your children. Destroy your career. Destroy your job. Destroy every bread that you eat, that you don't get it. Make you sickly. That's the Satan's attempt to destroy, that you may not prove to be faithful to the Lord. That's the battle. Why? Because you are submitting to the authority of God, authority Jesus gave. Here, the disciples were chosen. The twelve, the crowd were pouncing on him. They were crushing him. He was so famous, people wanted to just touch him to be healed. He went away from the crowd, chose the twelve people. He appointed them. And verse 15, Mark Gospel chapter 3, verse 15. If you see that, what it says? I have authority to cast out demons. He appointed the twelve. And he went home. And the family heard it. Even his family people say he is a madman. The word is used, he is out of mind. You know, when you believe in the authority of God and Lord strengthens you, the Satan says, no. Either you are in a family, either you are in a job, either in your personal life. If you have submitted into the authority of Lord Jesus in your life, there's another voice will hang, will challenge you. How come you have given your authority in the hand of Jesus rather than you doing authority by yourself, by your vested interest? Why aren't you doing it? There's a great battle over here. And when this happens, you know, it's very difficult to manage it. The messenger people mostly have gone astray because they can't bear, they can't bear this authority. Now, one of the greatest challenge to the church in the first century church was, which you have just read in Acts chapter 4. If you can take out Acts chapter 4. The greatest challenge for the church is to follow the authority. And the church, see how it took. That's why we church people always are failures. And we can't take a stand. Because the Bible has given example of failures. We failed in many areas and we have failed to acknowledge even if we have failed. Uh, that's very powerful, that's very sad. Then works the Satan's work comes. See chapter 4 and if you read verse, if you, if you read from verse 13 onwards, well it is because the Peter and John were in the council 
of Sanhedrin. They were caught over there. They pulled over his hand because they healed the withered man. You know, there was a lame beggar whom they healed him. And so they came, what are you doing this? The Jews really took, him to, took them to task. You know, sometimes when you do anything, they take you to task. Hey, what are you doing this? But that did what happened. They took him to the task, Peter and John. And, and, and they saw in verse 14, it said, they saw the man who was healed standing beside them and nothing to say in opposition. He was not saying no to them. He was totally in favor of what had happened to him by Peter and John. He favored that. And so what happened? What shall we do with these men? Sometimes, you know, when you do mistake, the administration do what? They sit around, they talk, and they discuss about profile of your life. What shall we do to the XYZ so and so person? Should we sack him? Should we warn him? What shall we do? Fine him? What shall we do? Put him in jail? What to do? They found the mistakes. But here the council met. They have performed so many signs. Verse 17 says, In order that they may spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more of anyone in his name. So they did warning first. They warned them, don't talk and heal people in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't do that. Warn them. You know, sometimes when you are put into jail, they warn. Don't talk about Jesus over here. Don't talk about Jesus over there. You don't talk. Hmm? In our country, which has been quite prevalent for the last few couple of years, I've been so much. Don't do it. Council did the same thing, warned them, don't do it. So they called them and charged them. But what did Peter and John said when they were challenged them not to do it? What did they answer? What would you answer when somebody tell you, don't talk about Jesus over here? Well, they answered like this. Peter and John said, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot speak what we have seen and heard. What does it mean? He said, you don't catch us because you see us doing this. Don't go on outward expression that we're preaching here, we're talking about Jesus there, we are baptizing people over there. Don't you look to us for what we're doing. So they were trying to tell counsel, don't look to us. It is not, we are not doing. You don't know what we are doing. So he, he tried to explain to the counsel. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. But we cannot but to speak and what we have heard. We cannot stop it. We have seen our Lord Jesus. We have heard him. We have seen you know, heeding on the word of God and experiencing the power of word, this is what the disciples have happened in their life. And you tell them, don't talk about Jesus. Families don't encourage their children to pray. Don't encourage them to read the Bible because you're doing the same thing what is happening in council. Threatening them. This can happen later on. First, go and give you an exam, man. I've seen most of the children writing the board exam giving an excuse that Sunday they cannot worship because tomorrow they have a board exam or they have an entrance exam. Some kind of exams are there. But Sunday is an excuse always not to come and worship the Lord. It's believed that's a waste of time. Can you imagine? And that's what this. We cannot stop. Worship will never stop. You give exam, you don't give exam. You got an interview, you don't give an interview. Worship will go on. 97 years of free church. Worship goes on. Not even a one Sunday in 100 years which you're going to cover will be a testimony that doors were never closed to worship the Lord. The enemies have come very close to the door. I hope you can see that. Because we are worshipping people and enemies are standing very close to make it happen worse to us. It's a, it's a time of alarm signal to us. Get these enemies out. You can't help. You cannot stop what you have seen and what you have heard for 97 years in your life and the life of free church. 
And then they say, for we cannot speak but what we have seen and heard. When they have further threatened them, then further threat came. The council further came heavily on them. Man, who you mean? We are useless people telling you. You are challenging our authority and our decisions that is upon you. What are you talking? Uh-huh. You are going against us. Again you are speaking against us. We are telling you, go away, don't talk. Now you are threatening us. We can't stop. Then what they say is, they threaten them, let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. So you cannot punish people of God because the people were around us. You know, one of the greatest part of the authority is this. It is not what you're doing. It is what God is doing and given to you to do the God's work. And when that happens, you know, it makes things happen powerfully. It makes this happen. It is not because you followed Jesus, because he fed you. He taken care of you. You know, that's what, that, that's what John said. I tell you, church, you're looking for me, not because you saw miracle sign, not because you ate loaves and had at you full. Do not labor for the food that spoils, but the food that endures to eternal life, which is the Son of Man will give you. Then they ask him, what shall we do to do the God's work? Jesus answered, God's work is to believe in the one who has sent. Take what he has sent. Believe in the one the authority that he gave to take in take in that very purpose that he had for you take in, in your life take in, in yourself you know work with God Jesus wanted them to feed and to forgive their sins he wanted to feed them and forgive sins we are called to be feeding people and forgive their sins taking care of the people and forgive their sins John chapter 6 verse 51 say I am the bread of living bread which came down from heaven if anyone eats of this bread will live forever my bread is my flesh and I will give it for the life of the world you know when people hear such teaching what they say man it's so hard to digest oh you telling us to we are a government servants how are you going to go and tell people <laughs> we are in a secular profession what are you going to tell about people and here we are. Lord is teaching us. Friend, it has been challenged by the authority that God has given to you in your families, in your personal life, in your job. Are you receiving the authority of God in your life and be good hearer and doer of the word? Hearer and doer. Not only hearer. Hear from one end, throw it from But also doers. Teach your children. Be doers of the word. Teach them to pray. Teach them to read the word of God. Teach them to face challenge by prayer and by the word, which is a two sharper than the two-edged sword. Teach them that these verses, these Bible speaks to us. Teach them how the challenges can be faced and overcome by the word of God, not by our own selfish wills. This is the battle. The enemy will be angry. Let me tell you, enemy will be angry. Enemy was so angry that one disciple has to commit suicide. The enemy was so angry that he killed all the disciples except John who were tortured and martyred. We call them martyred but they were tortured to death by the communities. Either by burning them upside down or making them burn in the open city. This is the consequences. But the fruit of the blessing of the word is, there is a victory. So what outwardly they do cannot destroy the work which is happening inwardly that God is doing in our life. So Lord, strengthen us in this faith. Lord, strengthen you to do God's will. The demons, the devil and the Satan will come. The wicked will come screaming as they came screaming to Jesus, howling, why have you come, Jesus? You are the son of God. Why have you come now to destroy? Why have you come? You find devil screaming. But the son of God has spoken. His enemies will be crushed. He says, vengeance is mine. I will take revenge. The Lord says, you have nobody to take revenge. You just use your sword. Today we read devotion 146. Praise God in such a way that God will take revenge. Praise God. 
he will take revenge he will let the enemies go away he will do it psalm 146 if you read that so beautiful some people praise god just to enjoy the fellowship enjoy a wonderful singing beautiful wonder but do you know it says when you praise god you should praise god when you are on the bed even so why you lie down the sword is there with you the word of god while you lie down the word of god is there while you praise the word is there the sword is there with you every moment of your life till the last breath let's pray oh the heavenly father we want to thank you for speaking your word to us thank you lord for the kingdom of god is advancing lord the first century christian the message was that you are our witnesses we are your witnesses for jesus christ is the lord for we are your witnesses the message was that you are resurrected god you are risen from the dead lord these message of the first century christians was lord to proclaim the kingdom of god has come and the work has already started and now we are reaching to the culmination of the battle prepare lord your coming generation people that they may not become weak and feeble and remain weak and feeble in the hand of satan but remain weak and feeble in the hand of the lord that they may get strength and power that they may get wisdom sophia knowledge and understanding from the word yes lord let the word we dwell in our weak and feeble bodies that we may become overcomers victorious no matter how much suffer and so how much pain that we have to undergo lord help us let us run a race holding on with perseverance consistently lord not letting your word taken for granted but not letting our faith and hope continue to remain strong let not lord things may dismay us but may continue to remain committed thank you speaking to us lord jesus this morning to every one of us let this power of christ let this authority of christ that we have received by hearing of the word in our prayers and our singing may dwell outside these doors at the in the doors of our families and the doors of our jobs and the doors of our community in the world we live in and that doors low we may receive lord of opposition we may receive persecution suffering pains but we know lord you have overcome it and you will again overcome it lord as then we stand beside the door lord that you will make it overcome thank you in jesus name we pray shall we all stand and affirm our faith by reciting the apostles creed which is found on page 109 in lord supper i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ his only son and lord he was conceived by the power of the holy spirit and born of the virgin mary he suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead and the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life of the lost let us adore and praise god by singing hymn number 222 my hope is built on nothing else and while we are singing adoring his name let us bring our offerings to the lord
Jesus says, Go make disciples of all nations. Lo, I am with you always to the close of age. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us now and forever. Let us sing our closing hymn as we depart from here, that we may not depart from his Lord present rejoicingly. Praise God by singing hymn number 30. Praise to the living God. <laughs>